Okay. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Preeti, and my topic is uh, a learning report on quantity surveying. My trainers are uh, uh, Ganti Mathi Nathan sir and Mr. Ashok sir. Uh, so the contents of this uh, presentation are introduction, responsibilities of quantity surveyors in construction, then the relationship, uh, relationship of quantity surveyor with other parties, what is a contract, the role of a uh, quantity surveyor in pre-contract stage and post-contract stage, then the types of drawings, then estimation of quantities using uh, various kinds of formula, then bill of quantities and conclusion. So introduction. So quantity surveying is broadly concerned with estimation, planning, and cost and control of cost on construction projects. It covers a wide range of activities, including cost estimation, cost planning, life cycle costing, and evaluation. It is one of the most important job requirements in civil engineering. So the quantity surveyors help to ensure that the construction project is completed within its projected budget. Quantity surveyors are also hired by the contractors to help with valuation of construction work for the contractor, help with bidding and project budgeting, and the submission of bills to the client. So the responsibilities of quantity surveyors, it depends on nature and the stages in a project. So they prepare tender contract documents in BOQ, they perform risk, value management, and cost control, advise on procurement strategy and contractual claims, identify, analyze, and develop responses to commercial risk, allocate work to subcontractors, then they survey to get prices and arrange payments, write detailed progress report, and maintain awareness of different building contracts. So relationship of quantity surveyor with other parties. So with the architect, so the architect will design the build, uh, buildings and hand over the drawings to the QS. So the QS will be a cost advisor and monitor all financial matters and report to the architect. QS has experience on this type of work to be done and the architect will recommend a number of QS to interview. So then the engineer, so that uh, the types of engineers in the construction industry are civil, mechanical, and electrical. So the civil engineers design the structures and the foundation. They also supervise the work on site on, on behalf of the client. So after the designs are prepared and the drawings are handed over, the QS will calculate the quantity of materials to be used, prepare tenders, and supervise the monthly submission of payments. Uh, with the contractors, so the quantity surveyors would be representing the employer's interest. Either they'll be the client or the contractor. So they will also look after the financial and commercial interests of the employer to keep them in the most uh, controversial contractual areas. They also evaluate and monitor the payment to co contractors at various stages of construction. So in suppliers, so uh, as being part of the co uh, project, a contractor must endure to procure a supply chain in a timely manner. Uh, so the QS plays a vital role in the process because uh, they'll be aware of the current cost and rate of the materials and they ensure the supplies are on time and within the budget. So what is a contract? So a contract is a legally binding document that recognizes and governs the rights and duties of the parties to the agreement. So a contract is legally enforceable because it meets the requirements and approval of law. Uh, law. A contract typically involves the exchange of goods, service, money, or promise of any of those. It can either be a written one or a spoken agreement between two parties. So a contract is divided into two stages, pre-contract and post-contract. Now we look at a, the role of uh, QS in pre-contract stage. So first, he should be convergent with uh, relevant IS codes, tender clause, and specification. Then uh, uh, quantities are estimated as per the drawings along with assumptions. So And then uh, like a brief budget, then the review of tender document, then a BOQ is made, and general conditions of the contract are known. Then analyze of the rate of materials, the labor, and the plan, and also man maintain a vendor database. Then analyze and compare quotations You see that bit stage. Quotations are nothing but a figure that a contractor gets from a supplier for the price of materials they need for the job. And he plays a role of value engineering. That is, it's like a systematic and organized approach to providing uh, necessary functions in a project at the lowest cost. Next, role of QS in post-contract stage. So uh, in post-contract stage, the preparation of contract documents for the signature of both parties, preparation of interim valuation and recommending payments, visit the site for progress and inspection, preparation of cost analysis at all stages at regular basis, preparation of final account, and attend meetings and update the client from time to time. So uh, in every construction stage, uh, drawings are very important. So there are two kinds of drawing, a tender drawing and construction drawing. So tender drawing is a formal invitation to suppliers 
to make an offer to the buyer for goods and services. It is produced by the architect and used for estimating and pricing the cost. So the quantity surveyors check them to see no substantial errors have been made. Later, the detailed reports on tender are submitted to the client. Next is the construction drawings. The contract documents that give the representation of work, they provide all information which are required for construction activities in writing and drawing form. So these uh, quantity survey use them on a regular basis for cost control during construction process. In this drawing of walls, doors, furniture, lighting, outlets are specified. Uh, graphic symbols are given for each. Next, uh, next type of drawing is the good for construction drawing. Uh, these are the uh, part of the final construction drawing services that have specification. So you can think of it like a final map that will be you uh, that will be used for the entire construction process. This includes uh, meticulous details such as uh, elevation, staircase, window drive, as well as technical and architectural details. So the benefits of uh, GFC are managing challenges with ease. So uh, GFC drawings are accurate and give a detailed arrangement of the entire structure, enabling the on-ground team to manage these challenges with ease and efficiency. Then it has a method, uh, methodological and logical quotation process. So GFC drawings allow professionals sh uh, showcase accurate pricing and elaborate details. Uh, these give the uh, clients a detailed picture so that they know exactly where the money is being invested. So time is money. So a lot of money gets invested in a construction project. So, uh, so uh, with the GFC drawings, it allows the builders and contractors to work in a methodical way, and they also reduce time on uh, uh, spent on rectifying errors and modification. So this is a GFC drawing. Uh, next, uh, so the QS he needs all the architecture, construction drawing, tender drawing, contract drawing to produce the bill of quantities. So before the uh, bill of quantities are made, there is estimation of quantities using different, like a summary is made. So first, um, a cubicle content, that is uh, for uh, uh, excavation, uh, oh yeah, for excavation PCC footing, uh, for those uh, we use length, breadth, and take the floor height. Uh, this is measured in cubic meter. Then for in case of shuttering, uh, you take the area of the uh, thing, area of the place, and the formula uses the perimeter plus the depth. Then uh, when you're taking uh, quantities that is in superstructure, that is you're know, taking your brickwork, flooring, painting, that is the architectural details, you take length to height, uh, that is the area of the uh, building. So this is the uh, the one of the examples which I've done. Uh, this is a, a budget which is done uh, in the pre-contract space to get a uh, brief idea. Uh, this is the architectural details. So we have the block work, plastering, flooring, then we have the painting, and then we have finishes, then we have the joineries are calculated. In case of commercial buildings, uh, there is the lift, which is also need to be included. So what is the bill of quantities? So bill of quantities is a document used in tendering in the construction industry in which materials, parts, and the labor are itemized. So the quantities may be measured in number, area, volume, weight, or time. So the bill of quantities assist tenders in the calculation of construction costs for their tender. And as it means, all tendering contractors will be pricing the same quantity. It also provides a fair and accurate system for tendering. So uh, the following uh, main components of BOQR, the item description, there's the unit, then uh, the quantity, then the rate per unit and the total amount. So this is uh, how the BOQ is uh, done. Uh, each description is given under each uh, topic and what rates to be included are also specified. Uh, this is the summary uh, at the end. So in conclusion, a quantity surveyor needs to employ a wide range of skills. Uh, needs, a quantity surveyor need to negotiate with all types of people from building site workers to directors which means that they need to possess good people skills and be able to express themselves both in speaking and writing. They need to have excellent numerical and computer skills as well as essential, uh, as well as the ability to read architectural drawings. So quantity surveyor needs to be flexible in terms of working hours and have to go on site to resolve a problem or take measurements. As we can see, the quantity surveyor has a wide range of skills, abilities and knowledge in order to excel in the profession. So the QS is so much more than an accounting for the building trade and with greater opportunities abroad and the growth of commercial management style, the role of QS is continued to adapt and grow to meet the needs of current climate and demands. Thank you. Good, good uh, report, uh, Preeti. And uh, what is your thought that uh, whether uh, 
uh, while you, you are taking this course uh, how you felt in the first day and uh, how you are feeling now so first day it was so hectic like there were so <laughs> many new things and everything was like what we didn't learn anything what we don't know anything like when you compare yourself you think you're like you're stupid you don't even know anything but it's nice now so like you're getting a hang of i'm getting a hang of it it's easy yeah 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 first maybe up to one week you might be felt what is this year full of calculations full so full of something which yes, is sir. boring and what is this boq and all and once you understood the concept and once you understood the subject then you can have a confident on anything see what is uh, it's nothing but uh, you say once the drawings are received the civil engineers work is to understand the drawings and make the estimates and make make the quantification uh, these are the main uh, works for a civil engineer understanding the drawing is a major thing because in a project uh, communication happens through the drawings only lot of people face the issue at the project is because they don't have uh, much knowledge to understand the drawing or uh, to get, they are afraid you can say uh, because in the uh, projects and all uh, the drawing volumes will be very high everywhere wherever you see you can see the drawings only <laughs> so uh, understanding the drawing and the calculations uh, in project management office uh, you can see the drawings uh, and the calculations and the statements and everything and uh, there is a lot of enough opportunities are available and it will be interesting also for you to learn and uh, you can start your own consultancy also if